can. All right, good to go. All right, so what are you working on, Paula? Um, I went back to um, the Days of Darkness table that I did some time ago, just to plug in a few more things. And um, I started this uh, re-looking at it right around the week of Passover. And so there were a lot of scriptures pertaining to Passover in there. Um, I went, I think I went to a new um, code sequence. Um, so I'll show you here. Let's see. <clears throat> Um, this right here is the access term. This is at a skip of 8644. And wow. this is days of darkness. Now tell us um, how you got your, how you got your access term. We'll give you that idea. Well, last year, a long I, time to render. Yeah. Last year. There it goes. Right. Okay. Uh, last year sometime I was, um, you know, I was doing, um, in the verse in Isaiah when it says, um, uh, go inside and hide for a while until the indignation is passed. And every time in some of those tables I was working on, it came up darkness and gloominess. And, and then um, a few weeks ago, I was asking Yahuwah, uh, what did he want me to search next? And the only thing that came to my mind was the word deception. So I came back to this table, Days of Darkness, I don't know why, but I plugged in deception or deceit in here, and this is the purple. It's the word um, uh, mirma, and it means deceits or deception or deceived, and it's here twice, the, the memresh mem hey. Yeah. And it's sharing itself. Memresh, and it's sharing. Yeah. Uh, it's sharing this red is um, to kindle or be burned. It's the word yasat, um, yod, zadi, ta. Um, I was, I've been praying over what this deception is uh, connected to the days of darkness and um, to be burned. Today I found this right here. And it's in the plain text, but it's Gadol, which we think of when we think of high priest. But it, it, it means um, like the greatest or highest or exceedingly or great. So it's kind of like this exceeding deception. Um, this medium green right going down here kind of attached to it is the word Matala. And it means... Prophecy, deceits, or illusion. Um, so last meeting we were talking, I was asking if anybody had any input. Amuli had a couple uh, terms. I, I don't have that sheet right with me today, but neither one of those were in there. I was going to plug Noahide laws in here, but I have not done that yet. Um, so also in here is uh, this yellow is here one time. And that means um, the word zam, zam, and it means menace or indignation. Um, starts, uh, well, it's like the, and then Zion, I, and mem, um, or wrath. You have wormwood in this olive green right here. It's yeah. here. Plain text. Twice, and in the plain text also up here, wow. you have in the dark green you have Israel, and it's encoded uh, one, one time down here. Um, let me see. And this, this is at a bigger font because I wanted you to be able to see it. it the table actually goes a little further in all directions, but um, then this blue right here i thought was very cool and um the word tabernacle or tent or shelter it's the word ohel o-h-e-l um and it can also mean in the um 
and the Strong's, it can also mean a camp formed from tents. So it can mean tent or like a camp of tents. So I just thought it was very interesting. And here's Yahuwah in the plain text. Um, this light blue is the word three. It's here, I think, three different times. It goes down this way in the extended table. And one more time over here. So it's like every time I do days of darkness, I, I try to plug in three because that seems to be what so many people are talking about right now. But I keep going back to Isaiah and where it says, uh, go inside and shut your doors behind you until the indignation is past. Um, but I do want to show you this, um, this, tech, this uh, scripture right here. Uh, it's in Exodus uh, 12:30. Uh, and Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up. And get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go serve Yahuwah, as ye have said. Also take your flocks and your herds, as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, we be all dead men. Um, so I just thought that was this whole this whole table right in this whole area right here is all in that area of um, Exodus. This is uh, United States right here in the white. Well, Any questions or anything? Where, did, where, show is, you. where is this at, you said? It's, uh, in Exodus. Exodus. Um, mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to, uh, to me, there's just something that I have not found here uh, having to do with deception and days of darkness. Because up till now, I've always thought the days of darkness um, were being, in other words, put upon us by Yahuwah for mm. judgment. And then, of course, we have protection in here. That's almost in every table in some way or another. But then to have this deception, seems like there's a word that might connect all this together a little more. So I'm still working on that. But I just wanted to give you an update on what I'm doing there. Very good. Aloha. 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 The other night, I uh -huh. got it in my head. And ironically, I, in, I, I plugged uh, darkness into the armor of Yahuwah code that I've got such a jumble mm -hmm. and um, it was in there. Oh, okay. Well, you know, in the past tables, um, his chariot, the Merkaba, um, sometimes Nibiru, Nibiru in the long form was not in here. Um, I didn't check the other forms, which I probably should do, but I was just doing that this afternoon. Um, I found wormwood in that one too. But you got war. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paula? Yes. I was just going to suggest, um, because pe people are suggesting that what they might do is uh, blame it on, like, I'm thinking alien deception. Uh-huh. Have you you've heard of um, Project yes. Bluebeam? Yes. And so that's what I was thinking, especially when it says an illusion. Yeah, because it, from, you know, right from here. understanding, it seems like they, what they're going to do is try to blame it on that and that they're the ones that are going to come to our rescue. Right, right. The so you have deception. that, you have that, that illusion right here. And then it also comes down this way. Um, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to find a few more things in here, I'm sure, because I keep, um, I'm still praying about, you know, I wonder if Project Bluebeam would show up. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to look that up. Okay, I'll make a new list here. 
<laughs> Very good. Let me know when you find that and I'll plug it into mine too. Bye, okay. Sir. All right, will do. Okay, so that's what I've been working on in the middle of moving. <laughs> All right, so the other day I was watching, well, look, maybe it was yesterday, was it probably yesterday? I'm losing track of days. I'm watching Doug Hamp, and I'll just pull this up, and uh, we'll, we'll do this together. And he said something about Bible codes that was disturbing to me, and I wanted to address this. All right. So we'll, we'll listen to this together, and I'm going to try to, I think. So hopefully I answered my own question. Let's keep on going. All right. Um, all right. So uh, we have a question from Misinformation. What are your feelings about the Toro Bible? And now somebody asked him a question under the name Misinformation. Right, so I'm feeling like this is all set up. I don't know. I can't prove that, um, but you know, I got a lot of respect for Doug. He is a PhD, is a theologian, um, but sometimes theologians let you down when you think that they would be thorough or will have some. Um, you know, if they're going to have an opinion about something, and they're a little more versed in understanding of what they're talking about. He answers a question and listen to what he says about Bible codes or Torah codes. He's trying to describe the mechanics of how it works, right? And see if you hear anything that's odd. Uh, great question. I'm, I'm really quite skeptical of the Torah or Bible codes. Um, now again, does that mean that, that, uh, that they're completely impossible? No, of course not. A lot of things are possible, but I just find them a little bit contrived. And I'll tell you why. Because when they find these so-called words in the scripture, what they're doing is basically a giant word search. All right, so they're, they're taking the Hebrew letters, and for some reason, they're deciding that we should make this rubric of letters, just like when you think about when, when you look at a, a word search, and you've got to circle the word, right? That's kind of what you have to do. You've got to circle the word. But how you arrange those letters on the page is going to really make a big difference. Okay, so think of it. Okay, so are any of you guys arranging letters on the on the table? No, he's way off track. <laughs> he yeah. don't know what he's talking about. He's trying to say that that codes are very subjective; that you can arrange these to say what you want them to say. And and my argument is, Doug, if you're gonna if you're gonna have an opinion about codes, get some tenure in it actually pick up a code program and, and, and see if they're there. Don't Google codes and, and come up with your, your argument based on what you find on the internet, because you'll have arguments like that. And this is the very same thing Dr. Heiser had when he wrote his little pamphlet trying to debunk the code, saying that it couldn't be any codes because you got different texts and um, missing letters and, you know, uh, there are no jot and tittles, and you're supposed to have 77 reasons why the codes can't exist. Anyway, same thing with Doug here. Doug is suggesting that we are manipulating these letters almost like an alphabet soup. Now, Heiser accused Chuck Missler, um, Yakov Ramsel, and Grant Jer Jeffries of outright fraud and said that they copied and pasted Yeshua codes to make Yeshua codes appear in Isaiah 53. Folks, this is why I'm glad we have students, because we need other witnesses in this field who can see for themselves that there's, it's not subjective at all. It's either there or it's not there, right? And you don't get to determine on the width and the height and the breadth of the table. The Most High does that, right? The computer tells you where the finding is. You ask the, you basically, when you're typing in a sequence of letters and you're, you're searching the text, you're asking the computer to see if these letters appear uh, at, a, at an equal letter distance. This will give you your matrix. And we're not looking at something in two dimensionals, right? This is actually a cylinder. And you're looking at a window portion of a matrix. Now, the scriptures that appear in that window, you had no choice in the matter. I had no choice in the matter. I did not put them there. The most I did. Right? 
So in the sequencing of unlocking this code, we discover that it's, it's locked on a particular cylinder width. If we took the scriptures and put them out on a spiral around a cylinder, and what appears in that matrix window is what you have as a code uh, matrix, you had no, no determination in that. Yeah, so, no way you could contrive that. <laughs> no, no, not at all. And in so, fact, it's, it's pretty dangerous to say that because you are saying then that you don't think the Almighty could do it. Well, out of one side of the mouth, he was saying it's very possible these there could be yes. yada, 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 but you know, the code searchers circ are, you know, very selective and he makes it seem like you and I contrive these codes because we, we have an agenda, right? First of all, I teach that you got to be unbiased in this. You got to leave your doctrine and your belief at the doorstep when you step into searching codes because the Father will, will reveal something to you that will blow your mind and you will drive yourself crazy trying to reconcile it with what you were taught, right? And it's like putting a square peg in a round hole. It does not fit. So what we've discovered in these, in these codes and the reason we, I believe I don't know if it's shared by everyone is not to predict the future, even though the future, the present and the past are there. That's not the reason we have these codes. It is so that we can reconcile the plain text scripture. We can know what he means. There should not be 63,000 <laughs> because they all disagree on something. And that, that's basically the bottom line. They disagree on things. So how does, how does the father circumvent that and, you know, bring us to a place where we can understand what he means, right? Because the enemy will use the pulpit to, to sow confusion. And that, we see that everywhere. There are preachers that are preaching that if you live Torah, you are, you are practicing doctrine of demons and, you know, just some uh, outrageous claims that they make, even though it's you following the footsteps of Yeshua himself, right? Um, you can test these things. And I believe the codes is another witness and is a tool to test the plain text scripture, right? Isaiah 53 is very clear. Yeshua is my name in some 1600 codes in one chapter alone shows a divine hand. And to put Yahuwah in a box and say it's impossible because you got a PhD and you know, you're not going to, you're not going to step out there on that, on that, uh, you know, thin ice on, on a subject like Bible codes. It's so taboo, but I will have an opinion about it. I will say it's, it's probably, you know, yada, 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 and make up some things, just pull it out of the air. And that's exactly what he did guys. You and I both know that that is not the, how the mechanics of the codes work. It is not subjective. It is either there or it's not there. You had no choice in it. Right. Um, so, uh, I didn't get no gonna, further gonna, than 15 gonna, minutes into this. Uh, are you going to put 12 across by 12 by 12? Well, why, why 12 by 12? Why not 10 by 10? You know, 10 letters across and 10 letters deep. Why, why not 7 by 7? Why not 20 by 20? Why not 100 by 100? And what you're arguing... Because he doesn't understand how it works. He does not he understand does. because it's Yahuwah who decides what that number is, Doug. So just... just and, and by the way... If this makes it onto YouTube and you see this, Doug, I would love you to take my course. I'll let you take it for free. I will give you the code program and teach you how to search codes. And you can see for yourself the reason why they are mathematicians and scholars. In Didn't Hebrew. he get together with you for a video not too long ago? He did. He did. And it, was, it, was it not brought up at all or was it just not even We didn't talk about it? codes. We talked about rightly dividing the word. Oh. By the way, I did mention that I believe that this is a tool to aid in that rightly dividing the word, you know, you can get, in other words, the scriptures are full of searchable terms that you don't need to go outside the Bible. Even though you can, you can pull things from the headlines. Sometimes there are codes that you can pull from headlines, news, in other words, historical facts that you can actually search in the codes. And sometimes it is there, but more importantly, you can find things that, that the Messiah said or, a, um, or Moses said or one of the prophets said, and it's a searchable term. For instance, uh, Matthew 24, Yeshua 
gives us a whole plethora of terms that are, are there. I have found them, you know, signs of thy coming, end of an age, you know, parable of a fig tree, all of those, all of those terms given in the gospels, you can find they're encoded. End of the end of days is encoded. So he's given us these terms that you'll see over and over, but they're also encoded. And it, and it takes you to another level of, of information where he puts the scriptures he wants you to see in that matrix window with ELS code, with, you know, um, other relevant terms that are also there that are with, with each term and with each anomaly that you find that statistical amazing data goes up folks it's it becomes this is not an accident this is definitely structure right so you can't do that with other books in other words like moby dick and gone with the wind uh, you'll find a random occurrence here and there but the the depth of some of the the information you see in these codes is is unparalleled there's nothing like it so um I just wanted to share that with you guys. And, and just a side note, um, Yeshua himself said, I just want to read that. It's, you can find this in Luke 10, 21, and also in Matthew uh, 11th chapter, I think it is. What is it? Yeah, 11, 25, and 26. Where he says, Yeshua said, I thank thee, O Father of heaven and earth, because thou hid these things from the wise and the prudent. He hid it from the watch. Those that got the PhDs and the opinions, that's who he hid it from. And look who he's revealed it to. The babes. The ones that don't know. They don't have a clue. Then you can read in Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret matters belong to you, Yahuwah Elohim. But what is revealed in those secret matters belongs to who? Us and our children to do all the words of this Torah, right? Nothing will be hid from you. He reveals himself in his word. I, I find that to be very powerful because the, these codes are not subjective in, in the way that, uh, you know, Doug Ham just put. Um, I did not put in here Mila Hagoin. I had no choice. Jonathan. Right? This is a code we talked about last week where, uh, you know, it's mentioned in... Um, Genesis 47, uh, excuse me, 48 and 49, uh, where Jacob blesses Ephraim and Menashe, and he says that Ephraim will be Milah Hagoyim, which is the fullness of the Gentiles. You find Paul says something about this in Romans. In many cases, people think that's the first place where they heard fullness of the Gentiles, and they fail to realize that actually Jacob coined the term in Genesis. That term's encoded. Mila Hagoim appears as a hidden message. I did not put it there. The thought just occurred to me to go search that out. That is, you know, if that's subjective, then, then I'm guilty. But the fact that all of these terms and all of the relevant scriptures that passes through this matrix in this window that you're looking at, I had nothing to say about. Right? Jonathan? Yes. Are you, are you going to offer that challenge to him about taking the? Absolutely. And, it, and that's to Dr. Heiser and any of them that have an opinion and they, and they want to come against the codes, even though there are others. I mean, Dr. Jacoby, uh, Chuck Missler, Yakov Ramsel, um, many that, that are passed on now. So what you're seeing now uh, with this group, we're it. We're the only ones in the believers side of uh, these codes that is doing codes for the most part it's uh orthodox jews and those that don't even believe in the messiah and i, I mean a, a basic point to say is just how much it's um iterated in the word that our names can be added and removed yeah. like our names are are in there and uh, so that why why wouldn't everything else be yeah it holds a lot of information like, you know, Mila Hoguin um, is connected to the house of Israel. The fullness of the Gentiles is connected to the house of Israel. Who is that? That's Ephraim. Ephraim is here. The remnant. Sharit, you know, and then we find Sharit vertical. 
uh, that's that's really important according to the methodology of the rabbis um, vertical anomalies connected to the axis term is very important and here we have it um, just one off as you can see it's one row over and up further in the text well the position of where this is uh, and I had all of this highlighted already guys this is a reconstruction of this because my computer shut down and I lost all the information that you're seeing now and more uh, but where the words shall read in this in this lighter dark we can't dark. see it yeah we're not seeing it Jonathan really? okay so I transitioned over that whole time nobody said anything <laughs> I'm sitting here showing you this table all right so this table Mila Hagoyim right the axis term is given in the scripture I had nothing to do with that right house of Israel sitting right next to it um Ephraim is in the in the text right in the in the area in the meat of that axis term where it sits Sharit which is remnant appears in the blue there but it's also vertical here and this is what I was talking about the, the, the vertical anomaly that's connected with the axis term it's just one column over and a little bit further up in the text that's remnant and crossing over uh, in the darker blue is the exiles the the galot right but then I saw something in inside the word sharit is Aleph mem resh gimel yod me Amar Gim. Amar Gim. And the best I can come up with, and it is a word, it means the emergence. Huh. So you literally have the emergence of the, rem the remnant. Wow. Who are the exiles. And then wow. you see the verses where these letters are hitting, and I could highlight uh, the, the rest of them in Sharit. They all fit together. They don't normally come together, folks. And I didn't place them there like this that they have a connection speaking to the remnant right with the word remnant there that's that's structure that's like looking at your dna and saying hmm a divine hand created this person right and decided they're going to have green eyes blonde hair and all the details in that dna strand there's too many details in these tables to suggest that this is just some monkey jumping on a keyboard and it came up with this. And that's where the term monkey text comes from. Right? So there's a connection to the, to America. And I believe America holds the remnant. The Sarit. We have here the end of days, which is a benchmark in time. Uh, and all of the verses that, that have highlighted here are in time remnant verses. Um, does America include Canada? It does. North America okay. and North America. Yeah, okay. it, it's all, um, and if it's really the same thing, the potpourri of nations, the, the many nations that make up Canada and the United States, it's not just, you know, Caucasians all from Spain or, or, you know, they didn't all just come from one place. It's many places that Americans came from. Right. So, it is literally a Mila Hagoim, a fullness of nations. So I, I find it fits in many ways. Um, the uh, the long term of Yo, uh, Yom Yahuwah, which is the day of Yahuwah, the great and terrible wow. day, is is right there. Um, it's also in the plain text here in Joel. Wow. Um, Let's let's go up here and just kind of look at what says what it says in Isaiah. Eleven, um, starting with around. We'll start at twelve, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations. Who's the nations? And it shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. There you go, right there. And gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. We're talking about the Milah Hagoim, the remnant. The exiles gathering the, the fullness of the end times, which is the Akret Hayamim, the end of days, right? So right starting out, all of these all of these verses seem to fit. You know, the 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 
envy of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. That is an end time prophecy. It only fits for the end times. And here it is. In, in other words, Yahuwah put all of these verses together in this matrix. Code Searcher had nothing to do with it other than finding, indeed, Milah HaGoyim is encoded. That is all I did. And then all the other words, you know, were just logical selection, you know, relative terms. And, and the, the fact that they fall there had nothing to do with anything I decided. I didn't decide the shape and size of this table. The most I did. Um, let's just skip down to it. And again, you can read literally verse by verse. And, and every time it's speaking to the remnant about what has happened already to them and what is going to happen to them. Let's see, 66, 18, we'll back up. And for I know their works and their thoughts, and it shall come. I will gather all the nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. Um, and then right there, I, I got a partial of a verse that's highlighted in the Mem of America, which is Mila Amin. Mila Amin is fullness in days. So it's connected to America saying, what? America, fullness of days. In the time that we're in right now. And then skipping on down, you can see where the cuff is in America. I'm gonna we're gonna read that verse there. And you can see how each one sorry about the dog guys. Elijah. Elijah. <laughs> it's relative um to to the the, the uh, table that we're looking at. In other words, not only is it speaking to its its time in the plain text, but in context of this table. With a connection to the United States, let's look at what Yahuwah has to say. And it's 30, verse 24. I'm going to back up to 23. And behold, a whirlwind of Yahuwah goeth forth with fury, continually whirl, and it shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. And I've always said that. When he comes... To, to execute judgment, the scriptures are very clear, folks. The only ones that, that are going anywhere is the wicked, right? The fierce anger of Yahuwah shall not return until he hath done it, until he perform the intents of his heart. In the latter days, which is now, you will consider it. And at that time, saith Yahuwah, I will be the Elohim of the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. And thus saith Yahuwah, the people which left of the of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause them to rest. All right. And then uh, to, for sake of time, I'll skip on down to some of these others that are seem just, wow, so profound. And this is in Joel here, right through the, the meat of the access term itself. Um, we got these powerful end time scriptures directly connected to the Milah HaGoyim. So let's just back that up. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. This hasn't happened in, in all of history, folks. This is for the end time remnant, right? So it's a remnant verse running through here. And it shall also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days, I will pour out my spirit. I will show wonders in the heavens, in the earth with blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. And it, the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of Yahuwah shall come. And there it is in the plain text there. And when I have highlighted verse five, and it shall come to pass. I love this about this, that whosoever shall call upon what the name, you can find the same reference in the Church of Philadelphia, quote, Church of Philadelphia, a connection to the name. They will call upon the name and shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as Yahuwah had said, and the remnant whom Yahuwah shall call. Again, connection to the remnant. And then we'll jump down to Amos. Famous Amos in uh, chapter 9, verse 13, 14. And again, I had no idea these wood verses are going to be there. But but the Father chose these chapters and verses that don't normally come together. 
they may be close in 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 their proximity in the text, uh, but the fact that they they come together like this in this spiral that we're looking at, he put them there. I didn't do that. Um, All right, backing up uh, uh, to verse 11. In that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen, which are, uh, which are called by my name, saith Yahuwah, that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, uh, him that soweth seed and the mountains shall drop sweet wine and the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people. You see again, this remnant, I will bring again the captivity of my people and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit, uh, and inhabit them and shall plant vineyards and drink wine thereof. And they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit uh, of uh, them. So it's a promise. And so I believe there's a lot that you can glean from these codes. Um, I disagree with Doug Hemp in the fact that these are very subjective. Uh, you know, I, I will say this, if you have an agenda, you can, you can paint yourself into a corner uh, sometimes, but um, Yahuwah has truth in it where he, he reveals very deep things as he said in his word without even like having the aid of the codes. He told us that he revealed these things. Um, this, is, this is just one way. So that's all I got on this table. Wow, we got a full class. Welcome, everybody. Anybody else got codes? Hi, shalom, everybody. Sorry I'm a little bit late. No I see problem. that we're, we're getting tarred and feathered again. Yeah. <laughs> You must have saw uh, Doug's little presentation, I guess. I've got a code, too. Well, let's share them, guys. Sh share them, bro. Yep. You, you want to go ahead, Chris? No, I, I uh, don't really have anything to show after I did that video. I'm painting and stuff, so these guys go ahead. I, I'm going to be a fly on the wall. I'll stick my nose in every every now and then. <laughs> stick away, brother. Um, I just want to make a point here to kind of help Doug out real quick. Oh, let's see here if I can share my screen. Can you guys see my screen? Not yet. Okay, so we're looking at numbers twenty seven seventeen. One verse. Okay. Let's completely forget about the fact that there is a computer program doing anything. Okay, this text has been the way it is for, what, 30, 35, 3,600 years? That's correct. Okay, <clears throat> you could find these codes just by looking at them. If you're looking at short skip sequences, I've made this point before, and, and, and you know, it's kind of disheartening that you know, we have to keep going over this because people just don't seem to understand and they want to bash the codes. I mean, the only thing that the program is doing is making a, a hard task of doing extremely long skips and putting it together. That's all the program is doing. But when you're looking at single verses, and this, for example, when you're going to Numbers 2717, and you see Yahushua at a seven-letter skip, wow. and then you see Elisha, which means the L of my salvation, that's, I, I didn't do that, and nobody else did that. Yahuwah did that. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's a little disheartening to hear all this because, you know, he has an audience of people that regard his opinion that, you know, friends of ours that are in our, in our fellowship, in our circles. Yeah. And, and so let's, I mean, let's just look at the facts here. I, I mean, it's... Um. Um, it's, it's actually on the, on the other side of that. I know we're being tarred and feathered again, 
But Dr. Pigeon actually called out, yes, last night on his Q&A for somebody to present a Bible quote on Daniel. So that's what I did. I did a video when I presented it about Daniel and I offered it to him on Facebook in private. He said, no, no, make that public. This is great. So on the other side of that, there are people who do appreciate our work. Yes. And, and, and so it, 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 it's hard, it's hard being tarred and feathered like this, but on, like on the other side, there's, we have actually have an advocate who, who has, who has credibility that uh, understands and appreciates the Bible codes. Just wanted That's to make very, that. Very encouraging. Yeah. Very, very encouraging. So, That's so great. Praise you, Hua, for Dr. Pigeon, and thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, um, you know, the point of trying to discredit the work of Yaakov Ramsel. Here we have the issue of Shmi code in Isaiah 53. I mean, it's like the paramount Bible code of Bible codes. <clears throat> it's been that way for, it's been that way for 2,800 years, roughly. Now, the odds of that being there are 50 quadrillion to one. It's not there by accident. <laughs> I mean, that's impossible. I mean, nobody put that there. It's, it's been that way forever. <laughs> and to think that could be contrived, as he said, you know. So. Yeah, we're the big Bible code conspirators here. <laughs> So, you know, I had a chance to meet Doug uh, last year at the conference, like very nice guy. And it just kind of, bl it just blows the top off my head to hear him say something like that. Yeah. You know, and, I, and you, ha you have all the, you know, yeah. I, I wish, you know, if, if those, and I mean, you know, theologians, those that have gone to seminary and all that, and they, 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 they are teachers and they want to, uh, you know, teach people. They're going to speak about such things, and they at least should have some work behind it, some research. Not, and I don't mean just googling things and, and reading articles on the internet. That's not doing due diligence and, and really um, checking it out. It's it's actually searching it and seeing if it's possible. And then why? Why you know? I'm still trying to figure out why, and I think that we've grasped it. You know, it's got to be connected to the confusion of interpreting his word. Um, even though that, you know, interpreting in a code can be, especially if it's predictive code, um, subjective, let's just say. Um, it's usually after the fact that, that these code tables make more sense. For instance, a um, very famous one for me is Siding Spring. Now, we were looking at a comet that was possibly going to have a collision with Mars for up to two years before the event happened. And for over a year the word collide was in that matrix. And then the scientists said there was a very high probability that it was going to be some sort of collision. Now I'm thinking it's going to be some sort of deep impact. So I'm using words like deep impact. I didn't change the code. The code still said collision. Mm -hmm. Here we know after years of, of the event had taken place, we know exactly what happened in hindsight. There was a collision. The atmospheres collided. Um, and there was a plasma discharge, which incidentally, the scientists that were at Siding Spring Observatory that night, it was October 19th, 2014, asked me, I didn't know anything about, you know, Electric Universe. They were looking for a plasma discharge to take place. And indeed it happened. It was caught on film, right? All that's contained in that table. Had nothing to do with me other than finding it, right? I didn't put it there but the information was indeed there, right? So um, had I not called that a deep impact for so long, it might've been uh, looked at as a very successful find as uh, far as predictive codes. Um, the uh, Daniel uh, table that I just presented in video, that, that is another one. We, we were looking at that in 2014 and really it didn't start manifesting itself until uh, when Donald Trump came out and said he was going to uh, offer a peace deal, you know, that's when all of a sudden things started con making connections inside the table. So yeah. it's, 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 it's not always beneficial to try and be predictive with that, with a code, even though it can be predictive, it's better to wait until hindsight or close yeah. to 
those events to really to make a determination. Yeah, well, and I've found that, you know, the, letting the tables interpret right. themselves is a lot of times the best because you can yeah. have an opinion about something and be completely wrong. And then, then the, the, the perception to the public is, oh, the codes was completely wrong on that. Well, that's not necessarily true. Uh, you know, no. the Donald Trump table clearly said president in the plain text right up under his name. And I went on the Hagman and Hagman show well before there was even a nominee. They were laughing that, that he would be even nominated, right, guys? So this is on record. And I told Doug Hagman that the code shows that there's president there. But I also made this caveat. He's president of his own company. So there could be a confusion there. We, we can't base an interpretation on that because he's already a president in the sense of he, he's, he's the CEO of his company. As it turned out, that code was correct. He did win, right? Well, and it, for, to, to go further, on election night, Chris and I did a broadcast where uh, it was very clear to both of us that the country had two ways it could go, a Cyrus way or a Jezebel way. So we had discovered this connection to Cyrus long before the 250 rabbis in Jerusalem just declared it. Uh, we were already hot on that. Um, and it was the codes that was revealing that it wasn't, you know, our own, um, thoughts and opinions on something is what was, we were interpreting what we were seeing. Yeah. The codes are very, very strong in, in, in the word Cyrus. I mean, <laughs> Trump and Cyrus, I did the Trump about, Cyrus table. And, how about Gog and Magog and the connection with Obama? That yeah. you found, Chris, you actually showed me that years before um, Glazerson started talking about it, let's just say. And then he was talking about it everywhere on the, you know, on the uh, uh, pen light over there with Rick Shaw and L.A. Marzulli talking about yeah. Obama had this spirit of Gog and Magog. And he was showing codes in Ezekiel. Well, wait a minute. If you guys only search the Torah, what are you doing searching Ezekiel? How did you find that? Uh, right? And, and uh, they, he even asked Glazerson, who found this code? Oh, oh, it's not important, right? Well, he knows exactly who found that. Chris found that, and we talked about it well over a year before he was even talking about it. So I'm, they got I'm it expect, Chris. I'm expecting the same thing to happen about Kushner. Cause he's yeah. about to make a peace deal and that's that they're, they're going to be all over that with the code soon. And so it's, I'm expecting the same thing with Kushner. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. They, you know, they did the same thing with, with Trump. Um, Glazerson's also sees the Cyrus connection and as all of Judaism in Israel, um, I would not be surprised guys if they declare him a Mashiach in some way, because, uh, a Mashiach that doesn't necessarily have to be somebody that's Jewish. I mean, the scriptures have, have, have declared a Mashiach over and over. They were, they were not, uh, they weren't even Hebrew in some cases, Nebuchadnezzar, Cyrus, uh, and, and on, on down all, all these antichrist spirits of Daniel's statue have been appointed, right? It's always to do his will. And in the sense of this third temple, which we did find in, in 2015, 2016, there would be a third temple. Um, so that was before uh, it's time. We, we didn't know that there was definitely going to be a third temple. And here we are at the end of 2016, they started consecrating things uh, with the altar and, and doing sacrifices, laying the groundwork, if you will, uh, at the end of 2016. Here we are, and they're waiting just for the 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 place to do it. Uh, I don't know how it's going to come about. Some say they're just doing it underground in a synagogue underneath where the temple used to be. And that's sufficient. I don't know. Uh, I just um, know what the scripture says, and it says it will happen. And there will come a point where they stop these sacrifices. And I'm, I would imagine it's PETA and those of the world that's, you know, that's cruelty and yada, 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 all that kind of stuff. You could see how the, that could play a part why it's so offensive to people that it has to be stopped. Right. Anyway, yeah. 
We are. Um, I I kind of do have a code. <laughs> I'm going to share my table. <laughs> I'll uh, pull up Ezra. Dr. Pigeon asked me about Ezra, chapter 3, verse 8. Now in the second year of their coming of the house of Yahuwah at Jerusalem, in the second month began Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, uh, and Yeshua, the son of uh, oh, Yozadak, and the remnant of their brethren of the priests of the Levites, and all they that were coming out of the captivity unto Jerusalem, and appointed Levites from 20 years old and upward to set uh, forth to the work of the house of Yahuwah. And you have, that's this line right here. And this code, this is, this is Donald right here. And this is at an ELS of 93. It's only the book of Ezra. Wow. And you have 50, 57, 78 across here, which we are already looked at. And then you have fr from Yobel or Jubilee standing right on top of Mikdash. Wow. Thank you. You have, yeah. you have Cyrus one, two, three times in the plain text and once in code here. Wow. And then right next to Donald's name is uh, Ezra 311. And they sang together by chorus and praising and giving thanks to you because he is good for his mercy endureth forever towards Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout. Then they praised you because of the, the foundation of the house that was laid. And that's wow. that word right here. Uh, I do believe I have it. That's incredible. Yeah. Right here. The foundation. He was laid the foundation of a house of Yahuwah. And that's right next to Donald. That's incredible. Wow. You know, you, you know, he's tied to the sure. Temple Institute and to, to build this. And the yes. fact that the Masons made him a master builder. And guys, that's exactly what he's done all his life is build buildings. Right. So he considers himself a master builder. He, he, the Trump Tower is his pride and joy. Um, and it's got <clears throat> symbolisms and, and all kinds of imagery everywhere. Uh, in his penthouse, he's got all the Greek pantheon stuff, right? The Greek gods and all this kind of things. Um, but yet, his connection to the to the third temple is uncanny with what Cyrus's involvement was. What Cyrus, in, he funded the, the rebuilding of the second temple. He was commanded to do it himself, to build it himself. But instead, he sent money and, and hired builders to go and do that. Now, Donald Trump has given money and is in a big supporter of the Temple Institute. So in the fact that he's married, his family's married into a very um, rich Orthodox Jew family. That's, yeah. Kushner. All the connections there. I mean, you can see he was hand. I mean, this is will, but this is to come to pass because it's prophetic. Now you can see all the enablers that he's lined up for this to happen. And uh, so you, you'll see a lot of people saying that Trump is a Zionist. That is true. He is a Zionist. There's no doubting that. Um, he's backed by the Rothschilds. <laughs> he's not backed by Soros, which is another kind of Jew. All right. Um, Soros is, the, is a self-hating Jew. Fought against himself uh, in, the, in the Holocaust. Do you, do you mind if I put up the Daniel table that I did a video on yeah because that's I mean we're talking about Kushner I might as well show show how how he relates in this table uh, down here is what you just saw in Ezra in this table right here it's just this is at 93 and this here is in the previous book at 483 yeah and you have Kushner right here. Kushner and the Prince of the Covenant. Look at that. It's So his name and it's in the same line as the words Prince of the yeah. Covenant. Yeah. Folks, and Chris didn't put that there. 
You got to understand no. that this is not alphabet soup. Each time you find an anomaly like that, you have to ask yourself, what's going on here? You have a polyon, Aleph, Pei, Wav, Lama, Wav, and you have Donald, uh, Dalit, Wav, Nun, Lama, Dalit. And just like he said, he, his residence is littered with Greek mythology. Yeah. Apollyon and, you know, uh, uh, Zeus and all of that is, uh, is painted in murals on his ceiling. And he has marble carvings of all of these deities in his, uh, his penthouse. Um, <laughs> Coincidence? Yeah, but there's a lot of coincidence with Obama in, in his administration. You will see the same thing with, with Trump. Uh, just because he says he's a Christian or other people say he's a Christian and things like that, uh, there's no reason to throw our eggs into one basket and say, oh, he's our savior. He's going to make America great again. That's a very dangerous ground to be on, right? Um, He's just another vessel that the father is using to accomplish his will. Lee, you got a question? Yeah, I was just going to ask if um, anybody had seen those books that were um, discovered in the Library of Congress. One was called The Last President, and then the other one was The Adventures of Baron yeah. Trump. Isn't that, and that crazy? They were, they're like 127 years old or something. Yeah. And it it's was uncanny. On it is yeah. uncanny. So, so what about time, tra like time uh, travel? <laughs> well, yeah, that was, this is the thing. There are dark forces that, uh, that understand these kind of things. Now, Albert yeah. Pike tapped into this through anyway, I don't want to get in uh, real deep in, but there's, there's very good evidence that, that people that practice dark arts, have access to to things of the future let's that just technology. say technology right yeah. yeah right and it's through demons and fallen angels and things like that so i would be more sort of like nostradamus in other words nostradamus worked himself in, into what a um in in hebrew it's or it's called um devenkis a state of like a trance state sometimes aided with uh, hallucinogens and things like that. Yeah. And so they would see into the future, right? Um, and then um, they were able to write things down in quatrains or, or, or literary form. Um, I think that is very possible. I won't say that time travel is completely impossible because the father had allowed me to understand what, what John was seeing when he was caught up, in other words. Um, he was he was existing in a place that had no time. He could see everything from beginning to end, just like the father can, right? And so this time concept is uh, it kind of gets in the way of understanding something. I think. Um, um, Nikolai Tesla, he was into the dark arts, just so everybody knows that. He may have been discovering these great electrical inventions, but he was also in the dark arts and. I discovered the actual name for that. It's called technosmia and it's extremely Luciferian and wicked. Wow. Yeah. There's a well, lot of technology. Maybe, I, go ahead. I was just going to say they've even come out recently. Um, um, Alex Jones, I believe it is, has admitted that they've been doing that. Um, that one that I think is from, uh, Oh, it's a hallucinogen that they're all taking oh, and yeah. uh, they all see the same thing. Usually serpents and yeah, you're talking about ayahuasca, the DMT. That, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Ayahuasca. Yeah. yeah. Now I also heard this is going to blow your mind, but I came across an, um, a couple of rabbis talking about the ingredients used in the temple sacrifice in the incense and the high priest having to stay in a room with this incense as it burned for a few minutes till so the whole room was smoky, right? And, and some of the ingredients I used was acacia. And acacia has the highest concentration of DMT uh, in it. So he was suggesting that the high priest was actually on a DMT trip, seeing into the spirit realm 
with uh, with these substances. Um, and that was something long. commanded by Father, by Yahuwah? I, I can't well, verify that, but uh, but you know he he sees all the elements there. That that's indeed what they were doing was taking th these herbs and burning them and causing that smoke, which is one. But it would be in the Torah if because all the instructions are in the Torah, exactly. so it would be in the Torah. Us using the uh, ark is built out of acacia wood. Um, and that's that's use, Using using the the psychotropic drugs was was one form of necromancing at one point in time, and it still is. And and um, and I that's think also they that's they also contact, in, as well. In many cases, they come in contact yeah. with demons. Yeah, that's them where they started intermingling um, with other. Um, you know, like other races, the the teachings that they had picked up from other, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, they probably what... started burning different things in the incense. And yeah. we have a we have an incense where Aaron's two sons dumped ashes from their incense incensers into the main incenser, and that's where they died. Oh, they got burned up. They yeah. got burned. Yeah, they they yeah. they were putting strange fire. They were mixing strange fire with his holy fire. Mm -hmm. That's probably to do with it then. Yeah. And they died. Yeah. And they're just rediscovering all those things. Uh, by the way, the Temple Institute is um, uh, everything from the dyes used to make blue dye and um, uh, red dye, uh, which is the uh, incidentally a worm that Yeshua refers to himself as in Psalm 22, which is called the crimson worm. Um, wow. They're uh, all the implements. Uh, all the way down to they think they've got the spices and the incense, uh, all that stuff figured out. Um, in ephod, there's even someone putting together the ephod. So we are so close to seeing this um, very prophetic benchmark in time, folks. If we're looking at, at, a, uh, at this as like a clock um, and, and where we are in, in the grand scheme of things, um, that is a big indicator, right? course this this structure will be destroyed by an earthquake the scriptures say that it even gives a number of deaths which is around seven thousand uh lives and this is in jerusalem at the arrival of uh of the messiah in his second coming and, and knowing he builds another it actually comes with him it's 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 the temple that's coming with him in the new jerusalem but it, he built it <laughs> that's the structure that the scripture says all, everyone from all over will come to Mount Zion. Um, right. It's when the kingdom is here. But, uh, yeah. And to know that it provokes father to such anger and for them to do it anyways. And then you have to wonder, are they intermingling that sort of thing in the temple, the third temple that they're building? Like, yeah. I, I highly doubt that they're doing everything according to you know, like trying to serve him if they already know that they're not supposed to be doing it in the first place. If you look in Ezekiel chapter eight, you're going to see all the things that they were doing in the temple. And I suspect that all those things are going to be brought back in again. Yeah. They're doing the Jewish mysticism, the Talmudic and the Kabbalah. They're mixing that in with all the temple stuff. Yeah. Hi guys. Love you. Hey brother. Or yeah, that's a big point. Is it's not it's not Torah observance as as you might think. This is more of the commentary observance, which is what the rabbis made up uh, in their interpretation of the Torah, and then what they add to it. Right. That's basically what the Talmud is. So they're not doing it to honor him in any way, obviously. Well, it's more about the Mashiach and the national identity of Israel, right? Which to them is Jews. They're not really acknowledging Ephraim at, at this time. Some are. People like um, Hillel. Um, Hello, Weiss. Weiss, and uh, thank you, brother. And yep. um, Ariel Cohen, and, and, and I probably a lot of those types of Orthodox Jews understand um, the prophecies of the scripture and, and how the two sticks will come together, who possibly who Ephraim is. I like Ariel Cohen's thoughts on that. He believes that Ephraim is hidden inside the quote church. Um, I believe Ephraim is more 
ge geographically, you know, oriented to countries, but um, it, that also makes sense. Um, it doesn't matter who's right. Um, there is a remnant that's woken up that has not yet went into the land, right? It is only Judah that's in there right now. And their interpretation is a bit racist and biased to them, right? Um, they're even making it harder for any of us to identify as Israel, right? They want to make it, you know, about a DNA sample and stuff. The father knows who you are. And by that, anyone who's grafted in is by definition Israel. Um, so, Micah, you got something to say, brother? Yeah, um, I went in here uh, Monday. I was just wondering if you were doing better and everything. I am doing better. Um, every day it's a little better. It's like I take a couple of steps forward and maybe one step back every one, every few days. It's maybe I overdo it the day before. I find but, that if I sit down long periods of time, like so right after class for the next day, it's usually quite painful. Um, uh, yeah. So, but it's, it is getting better. Um, I'm a little concerned about the, you know, just depressing. Um, had I known it was going to be like this, I probably wouldn't have done it. And so it's probably best I didn't know because it was, a, it was something that I absolutely had to do. Well, I'd have bled to death. I was bleeding every day for months. Yeah. And, um, and wasn't getting need, any better. We need you here, brother. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I was going to say when uh, you guys were talking about the hallucinogenics and uh, stuff like that, a lot of the stuff my dad told me um, that Yahoo had to step in and help him out in the most profound ways was um, either he, something was done to him you know, whether it was, you know, a stranger or DEA, you know, or stuff he'd done himself, mm -hmm. it, it was, you know, under those times that um, he received the most help. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't doubt that there, um, I mean, you can even find this in the scriptures uh, where the prophet is told to eat this roll and it was bitter, it was sweet and bitter, right? And then what happens afterwards? They see visions, right? Um, or, or like we're just talking about these two rabbis that were talking about the, the ingredients inside the incense and what was taking place inside the, the room where the, this high priest was supposed to stay until the room filled with smoke. And this was a closed room. And there was, a, there was one place in the scripture where the, it, sh it says that the priest, high priest and all the Levites fell on the ground, right? When, when you who appeared in this cloud, they all fell on the ground. So he was making this connection that they were under the influence of something. I can't prove that, but I, I'm, I'm telling you that there are theories among Judaism about this substance being used in the, in the ancient temples. And let me just say, in ancient times, I mean, they were doing things like that. At, at the, the place of uh, Neph, uh, uh, Delphi, the Oracle of Delphi was on Belladonna or some other kind of natural occurring gas or something. I remember seeing a documentary on that, but it was, they, this female was definitely on some kind of something that allowed her to see into the spirit realm. So I would not put it past me that ancient Israelites who are very capable of sacrificing their children to Molech were probably doing some of these things too. I, I can't say it was condoned by the temple or by you or not. I'm not just saying um, the pieces fit and, and I'll, I'll get that video for you sometime and post it over in um, discord. It's a, interesting. Um, these two are two scholars. Uh, both are mm -hmm. Orthodox Jews. Um, Roddenberg is, is well, he's a scientist. Um, very compelling information though, that, you know, who's to say, It makes sense because, I mean, if the high priest is in the sanct is in the Holy of Holies inside, closed off by himself with this acacia wood burning, with the smoke going up. He's probably going to get some It makes sense that oh. it makes sense. I mean, that's, we're not saying, we're not condoning, you know, you no, know. I'm not saying go that do, go Go on an acid trip and go talk to Yahuwah. That's not what it is. It's, it's. 
that it may be uh, a vehicle that's being used, but it's it's you who is having the priest do it in a certain way, yeah. in a certain setting. It's definitely something we do not understand. All we can see sure. is that the puzzle pieces are there, and it's probably safe to surmise that something is happening in, in that fashion, um, especially when you see things. I'm not saying that it's not possible that, uh, you know, people fall down in churches all the time under the fear of the Holy, Holy Spirit, right? So um, why are they falling down in the presence of you in this cloud in the scriptures? It talks about that, that 120 uh, Levites and the high priest, they're all, you know, fell out in this cloud. They became overwhelmed. Um, is it because of the, his presence? What's going on there? I don't know. I wonder if that could have been one of the reasons why he didn't want him, want them burning incense to the queen of heaven. Yeah. Because, Maybe they were uh, burning some really uh, weird, not weird, not funky that smells incense. good. <laughs> it's usually something they're mixing together that, like in ancient times, if you think about this in ancient times, what they were doing across the board, like in Delphi and in other places, um, they were doing the very same things. There is a term in Hebrew called the vancus, and I think I'm saying that right. I may be wrong, but it's a trance state that um, one uh, gets into um, one way or another. I don't know. And that you actually are, are connecting with the heavens and you're, you're, you know, uh, in communication with, with heavenly beings. That's a, that's in Judaism. I, I kid you not. So it is something they practice. You, you know, the, the line between legal and illegal, legal and illegal drugs is a very gray area. Yeah. Let me just be on, and I'm, I've been on the record about this. Plant medicines, I believe, are good. Whatever the Father created, whether we know how to use it or not, I think is he intended it for it to be medicine. Now, what man has done through pharmacology and through, um, you know, mixing of molecules and synthesizing and things like that, and then enslaving people under, you know, that thing and in this particular country it's all it's raping folks i mean the the cost of drugs for you know whether it's diabetes or whatever it is in this country is astronomical so the pharmaceutical companies are, are raping people in these costs right but they're also with with you know some drugs like statin and we can go on in many directions on it are harmful are very harmful for people. It turns them into drug addicts in some cases. If they're on opiates, like my stepfather was very addicted to Percocet. And, you know, he had a lot of problems like congestive heart failure. He has obese. He was very big. He was six, six four, uh, former football player and about 400 and something pounds. And they, they came very close to amputating his legs. Well, this man on the last years of his life was addicted to all kinds of painkillers. The, the bedside table was full of bottles of drugs that he was taking. That's bad. That is bad. So I look at that as different than plant medicine, which Darla and I and our family are, are more homeopathic, um, essential oils and things like that, uh, other than what pharmacies would like for you to be buying from them, which is it's just a racket, I, I, just disgusting. You know, I got family members that can't afford to pay for the for medications because it's so crazy, right? It's disgusting, and it shouldn't be that way, um, at all. I don't know why I'm ranting about it. It's one of those things where I'm very passionate. They are, the, the vaccines, another thing where they're pushing on people, are actually harmful in many cases. Um, and so we, we look at um, the medical field is supposed to be a place of refuge, a place of safety, because, you know, these people are there to, to care for human welfare. But then you find a, a human organs being trafficked from aborted babies and the things that they're doing for money 
in the medical field and then uh, you have a different outlook and I, that's how where i've been in latter years of my life is stay away from hospitals as much as i can i didn't want to have to really have this surgery um but it was just something that was absolutely something i had to do um We've stayed, managed to stay out of, of hospitals and not be sick. We haven't had the flu in several years. Um, but sometimes you just got to go. Has anybody else got codes? I don't mean to ramble about things that don't matter here. How about modules? Some of you are working on your modules. Any questions or uh, issues you guys are having? I did have a question on module 12. You ask us to recreate one of your tables um, and you're using Torasaw. Uh -huh. I guess we just try to recreate it and with keys to the Bible. It wouldn't come up. Wouldn't come up. Okay, so it was probably something that was in the Tanakh. Um, it was it a Barack Obama table? Uh, Desolation. Um, okay. So, all right, we'll, we'll change that. I'll change that to something that's in the Torah exclusively. That way it doesn't matter what program you got. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about, Micah, and I forget what the term is. Um, it's a kind of a rather lengthy term, and it's one of them funky ones that doesn't match up, brother. Yeah, it's because um, Keys of the Bible and Torah song has different orders in the books because they're two different texts. Uh, we currently have access to three different texts, uh, including the, the code finder. We're trying to get a fourth one. Um, what we've seen is they all render codes. Um, right. So uh, that's why we're using them. There will the, be uh, your, both not between the three. Your uh, resurrection Yeshua table, that was all in Genesis. Yeah, that's a good one to work. That's all in Genesis. I, I have a quote. Well, let's see it, brother. All right. Yeah. And let me just say, well, by the way, it's so, so good to see you back with us, Shelby. <laughs> We're yeah. so blessed by you. Yeah. Go ahead, Harold. Sorry, my, yeah, my computer is like um, I'm trying to. Oh, it doesn't open. It's so slow or something. Well, just. just don't stop talking because I'm, I'm trying to make it work, but it, oh, there, there's something. Okay. Um, it's a bit slow. Well, it should come up. It's rendering. Um, yeah, is it, is it this? It's rendering. Okay, okay. Am I, am I still here? Oh man, do you hear me? Yeah, we hear you brother, but I don't see anything. Oh, you don't see anything? It says it's rendering or, you know, started. Okay, okay. My, for some reason my computer is a bit slow. Is it still rendering? Yeah. What is going on? I hope this comes up. This is... Sorry, my computer is uh, something I have to check for viruses or there something. There we go, it's up now. It's rendered. Yay, I prayed. <laughs> you, you see it? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I just, I was experimenting. Oh, yes, there it is. I can blow it a little bit up. Um, well, um, I have to. Uh, I'm getting better at this, brother. There you go. You can see it. 
Yeah. Is something about the Ruach? Um, it's um, the this access term is um, fruit of the spirit. Okay. I was just experimenting, and uh, in the yellow, there is um, that's that's joy. The first one. Did you guys get that? That's fruit of the spirit. He's got as an access term. Yeah, fruit of the spirit. Okay. Not fruits, just fruit. Right. I think it's, and uh, the yellow one that's here, that's joy. And uh, in the green, there is uh, shalom or peace. And um, I couldn't find patience, but uh, kindness is in the blue here. That's kindness. I dug it up somewhere. And um, then it was um, goodness, and it produced all over the place, so I skipped it out. Um, and um, the orange, orange one is um, faithful. So I, I might have to, might have to, um, or, or is it, um, uh, is this a, a Mura? A Mura? No, it's, well, I was just experimenting on trying some things and, uh, which you, you taught me and you, you guys, and, uh, I got at least, um, like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six of this fruit of the fruit of the spirit. It's very good, but I have to check it better out. But can I can I just explain my view on the like future codes? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I personally don't, don't, I feel like it's putting Yahuwah in a little box, in a box to say about the future, we shouldn't touch it. But I, I like, um, um, yeah, I, uh, I, let me just be real clear. I don't, I, I, it's not that I say don't, it's not accessible because that's, that's contrary to what the scripture says. He says the hidden things are for us. Right. And that would be yeah. what's in the future. The problem I have is with, with someone who's just getting into codes and this happens a lot initially with people searching codes is they want to go straight to predictive elements instead of yeah. sharpening your skills first. And that's why I yeah. start searching Yeshua codes or codes about yourself or your family, because you know, those facts, right? And once yeah. you see how these terms in, in every way in methodology apply, proximity shortest skip how they arrange themselves themselves yeah. you don't have anything to do with it you just know if the term applies to you right it's relevant yeah. so if you put it in there it is the most high who's put it wherever it appears once you learn it to see how this truth is true then it's easier yeah. for you to to search things that are unknown right because well, you well, have some I, time I, in searching codes doing something that are known facts, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. but I just want to say that um, it's a promise that the Ruach will show us things to come. You're right. And, it's and, his, uh, and but, it is his priority to do that. But, right, so I'm not going to challenge and say it's, it, you can't have a predictive code. Or you're not going to get it. I'm not saying that at all. We're just not going to focus on that as if that is the reason for the codes, because that's a mis misconception with a lot of people in, in the mainstream is, well, codes are not accurate yeah, I, for predicting the future. Well, that's not the primary purpose of it, I believe. Right. I, I think, I think it's also for information. It's for edification. But, but, You're right. Yeah. But, yeah. but, um, um, in my opinion, calling it divination or, like we are dappling with a Ouija board or, or, or a crystal ball like Nostradamus, 
Yeah. But, but th this is the, the Bible. The, the it is the Bible. That's right. So, so we're not cutting I, the head off a chicken and spreading the blood on the ground and predicting the future. That's divination, yeah. right? Yeah. Their scripture uh, says that there's a time where they'll call evil good and good evil. And I think this, this is not that. This, Even this though Daniel was classified as among the soothsayers and among the, um, you know, the, the witchcraft and all of that. He was classified in Daniel. He says it. It does oh, not make him one oh, of those people, right? Yeah, 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 Daniel. Right, in Daniel, it, that, there was what he was, he was kept with the soothsayers, the prognosticators, the predictors of the futures, those that read tarot cards, the magicians. He was, he was held among them. Yeah, yeah. Right. He, he was called to be an interpreter, yeah. Not not a predictor or a, or a channeler or anything like that. Right. Daniel, well, Daniel, he had to read read something that was on the wall. He was an interpreter. The scripture says yeah, he was one who he understood was, enigmas. He understood parables. He understood. And, and he, he, he was wise in visions and dreams. Right. Basically, he was given visions of the future. Yeah. But but I have to cover this uh, like um, um, the Bible. Like, if you know what's going to happen, like if, if a man threw himself out of uh, skyscrapers, on the meantime he's going down, you, can, you could go basically to the coach and it would say, he will die, <laughs> you know, it's a bad example. But like, if you know things are gonna happen, like we have in Revelation, and, and use that as a point, yeah, I that that is like that is something we know already about the future. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. And so so I would think that basically that's that's good for for like taking keywords out of. You're absolutely right. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, brother, and even touching predictive things. Uh Ariel Sharon was in a coma for seven years and died in the seventh year. And I had a theory that this was going to take place based on codes that were found in the third year of his um, condition, right? Yeah. So up until three weeks until his death, yeah. we started talking about it again on, on my channel. And lo and behold, he dies three weeks later. Now, he, he'd been in a coma for many years. And the fact that the Holy Spirit drew us to talk about it was to show us something. And it was that he indeed can confirm things through the codes and that are predictive. Now, that was something for, for myself and for those that were around me in the, in the immediate vicinity around me. Not necessarily something that I was pom poming on YouTube. But, but you, you, was I, 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 talking about I, the death of somebody in a predictive way, uh, in other words. Uh, but, I, I agree with you. The, the most like the predicting or, or, or looking at the future might not be the the like um, primary thing to do with the codes right it's also right. About the past and present and also information yeah so so it's much more than that it's uh like and, and i'm i'm not talking about if you go like guessing on you know like messing with it like uh, guessing or something that's i'm not meaning that but mm -hmm. if, if uh, like yes, <clears throat> Yeshua said himself, he, he prophesied about what was going to occur, and that that I would say would be also valid search terms. Mm -hmm. But but in a, in a, like um, you, you you would have to know what you're doing. Absolutely. And and, and in in certain parameters, if I'm phrasing right. it right. And that's why you got this course is to give you a little foundation in Hebrew, but also teach you solid methodology, the Holy yeah. Spirit to do the rest. Okay. Yeah. But just that, you know, I'm, I'm not like looking at the future all the I time. I'm, I know. Just, I don't think you are. So, so I, 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 I would say uh, if it's, if it's okay, then it's for later times when I'm more. But once I'll, I'll, and, I'll be um, concerned if you start, you know, making predictions over in Discord and stuff like that, and in predicting the rapture and stuff, then I'll have some some concern. But you're fine, um, 
I think you've got enough self-discipline, brother, that you're not, you're not going to get yourself in any trouble. Listen, uh, uh, we'll, we'll reveal to each I'm one of the guys at some period something predictive. He's done it for myself. He's done it for, for Chris. I mean, we've seen it. And, and, you know, incidentally, the Jews have been more successful at it during the time of Saddam Hussein um, during the first Gulf War. The, the Jews were using this as a, as a pronoun, pronoun, uh, prognosticator, um, if you will. That's a fact. They knew exactly how many Scud missiles were going to be fired and where they were going to hit. And they moved their people to compensate for that. And this is very well known in, in the uh, you know Torah code community that this happened. It's in a it's in a, a lot. Draws a lot of it has to do. A lot of it has to do with intention. I mean, they they were doing that to preserve life. We're yeah. we're we're doing this, to, you know, to warn of warn of idolatry when Cyrus, point, Chris. When, you know, when Donald Trump is elected, we didn't really want to know the when. We wanted to know the why. Why is he being elected? Why is he putting it? Well, obviously, because he brought favor to the state of Israel. You know, the, we, we're, we're looking at the why more than the when. The when the when kind of just occurs naturally within yeah. why we're looking for the why. Very good. That's but, exactly right. The, 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 the central thing, I would think, in the office of a prophet is to call people to repentance mm -hmm. and show them Yeshua or Yahushua. Like it's 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 basically it's a it's like a side role if if, if I'm phrasing it right to to know the future. They they knew, they were shown the future, but they they their task often were like like Jonah. He when he came to Nineveh. And like he, he was like a bad boy, you know, not wanting to prophesy. But he, 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 he preached for them, and they all repented. So I would, I would think that would be the primary purpose of a prophet. Right. So I'm, I'm not gonna like. Well, there was a guy who who said to Sidroth that he found his dying day. I'm not gonna do that. Like when he dies, yeah. am, am I still on? Ain't that dangerous territory there, Brother Jonathan? Looking stuff like that up? Am I still on? You, you know, you don't want to walk a fine line or, or you know. I would think any kind of search that you do, that there should be a level of reverence because you're essentially donning a, a, an ephod, which the high priest did. There's no question that there is a connection to the ephod and what we're doing. In other words, yeah. there is an element of this that is a communication device, right? I don't yeah. think that Satan and, and the demons have access to it because I think th by design, when he sealed books up, Right. Yeah. By design, he created a way to preserve information for the remnant, because the scripture says he's hid it for you. These things are for you. Right. Yeah. So it makes yeah. sense that we have acts that he's using technology of the day. These computer systems. And by the way, all computers worldwide were invented because of code, not necessarily yeah. Bible code, but because of code enigmas. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So here we are today with this technology, ha have access to these ancient scripts, 4,000 plus years old, right? 30, 3,500 years old. And an information yeah. is preserved in it. And with the mathematics involved in this program, you can extract or unseal these books in a very fast motion. In other words, it doesn't take you a hundred years to count letters to find these tables like it would if you did it manually. It does it in fractions of seconds. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Isaac Newton didn't have that kind of access, and he was the, one of the most brilliant minds in the world. Here you are, a babe, and he's hid it for you. You have access to it. You don't even have to be fluent in Hebrew. You just need to have an, a basic knowledge right? Because we're talking about sequencing of letters, like a combination, not lock. We're not trying to dissect um, the grammar of, uh, you know, 
a Hebrew novel. You don't need to know the jots and tittles. It's the sequence, right? You need to distinguish those letters between one or the other. In other words, that one of the most common mistakes we've seen with, with beginners is mistyping a letter. You type a psalmic for a mem, right? Or um, uh, a noon for a vav, right? And the letters are not necessarily distinguished by you yet. And so you misspell words. Um, that happens to all of us. So it's co most common mistake, misspelling a word because of miscuing a letter. So if we can teach you those 22 letters and you can, you can distinguish them and no matter what font we're using, that's, that's half the battle, right? Because terms, uh, searchable terms that unlock a matrix will, will a lot of times I'm teaching you to use your scriptures. So you can find that in an interlinear and use the letters because you know the letters and type that in, in a sequence, because that's all that's needed. You don't need to know how to pronounce it or the jot and the tittles. We're talking about sequencing, unlocking a code, right? And I have, a, I, I have a code that I need to share. Yeah. Okay, f first, I misspelled the word generations. <laughs> okay, I have to fix that. Um, but we were talking about the why. And I believe we are given an opportunity to f do, do this right where our forefathers failed. And that's actually what's being mentioned in Psalm 78. Uh, they kept not the covenant of Yahuwah and refused to walk in his laws. But here in, in uh, verse 7, that they might set their hope on Yahuwah and not forget the works of Yahuwah, but keep his commandments as might not be as their fathers. You have to ask yourself, how old are the Bible codes? Well, if we're given an opportunity to do it right where they failed, it's got to be old. It's got to be, this is ancient technology. And if you look at the coding, the way that it's laid out, you hear you have Yahushua's name right there standing right on top of, in the house of Elohim, you have uh, in, in the, or the children of Ephraim, but you have the word preserve here, and the word code that goes up here to the word enigma, and the word recount or record, and this, I misspelled generations, and this is in the middle of Psalm 78, between Psalm 73 and Psalm 83. These are penned, some, penned by Asaph. Some are, are presented by his sons. But this is in the middle of a gathering, a restoration. This is why the word preserve, that they would preserve and restore what he wants, uh, his commandments and his laws. And, and <clears throat> like Brother... John was saying proper interpretation and confirmation. Sorry, guys, I, I was kicked out. Oh, sorry about that. Did you hear, uh, did, did you hear what I was saying? No, uh, <laughs> we didn't. I didn't know that you'd been kicked out and I was presenting something. That was a very beautiful yeah. table, by the way, Chris. Yeah. Uh, very very beautiful. I would like done. to just let me throw this out there. I would like to compile all the Yeshua codes that we can across the board and maybe put together some kind of um, book or PDF or something um, on all this. No matter what, you know, just anything Yeshua and the Messiah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. What was you saying? Oh, I've got, you know, I've got a whole. Uh, Whole catalog, whole catalog let's compile them all and see what we got uh, that would be really good just to see um, um the compilation, compilation. and then we plaster them all over our walls yeah or anywhere I, you know that's a good witnessing tool has anybody done a kaduri yeah i've done a kaduri table mm -hmm. okay. yeah and it was at the time of sharon's death that's how i came in contact with kaduri i had no idea who he was until the Holy Spirit had us looking at 
um, Ariel Sharon's table. All right, so let me just back up. Years before, about year three of Ariel Sharon in a coma, Moshe Ashok found a table that said something to the effect of Ariel Sharon's name, and it had in the plain text, seven ewe lambs to atone for his sins. Now, a lamb was good for a family for one year. And now, for the fact that it had seven ewe lambs to atone for his sins, spoke to me and said seven years that he would be in a coma. This is at year three. So what, we, this was speculation on my point based, based on that number in the pl plain text. It was no way for me to know that that would be the case until after the fact. So this is one of those things that where we were waiting to see. Um, I could have said, yeah, Aerosol's going to die in year seven of his coma. And then just roll of the dice, hope that that was the case. I couldn't put myself out there and do that. So in a smaller circle, I would express this and, you know, Chris and there's others that were, you know, present in that. I remember distinctly saying, I have an idea uh, what this means. I think he's going to die in the seventh year. Well, we had completely forgot about that aerial Sharon table. Nobody was talking about it. Nobody on the news or nothing. And just one day driving down the road, I heard the Holy Spirit say, pull out Ariel Sharon's table and look at it again. And so I did. And so I was telling the tiny chat people, you know, you know, I'm looking at Ariel Sharon's table again. Um, incidentally, Moshe Ashok found one, yada, 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 seven years. I kind of think he's going to die in the seventh year. Uh, let's see where we are. Oh, wow. We're in the seventh year. Right. Three weeks later, he dies. And so the Holy Spirit had brought us back to that point or that search to show me something that my hunch or my, my thoughts on how to interpret that was right, that it was in the seventh year. And that's what the code was showing that seven ewe lambs were to atone for his sins. What sins? You know, he, he bulldozed, first of all, he, he started communities settlements in Israel. Then he went back and bulldozed them after he did a complete 180 flip. Um, many Jews thought he was a betrayer. Anyway, um, he, he was, he was given land back to Palestinians. And so many believe that he, that he came under a curse in the Jewish circles. Um, that's, I do believe, I do believe that's where uh, the Gaza Strip was given to the Palestinians. Yeah, and Kaduri, this is where Kaduri comes in and how I found out about him. There was speculation he was under a curse. And so the, all these rabbis and sages were, were you know, talking about this. And, and I'm hearing about this rabbi called Kaduri. And he specifically said that uh, some um, mystic Jews had cast a spell on Kaduri, I mean, uh, uh, Sharon, and that you know, this was a cause of that, that he was going to die, be, or he died because um, of the sin he did against Israel, which was taking back land um, from Israelites that he gave land to, and then bulldozing their house and then giving it to the Palestinians. Um, anyway, um, I'm thinking, who's this Kaduri guy, right? So I'm, I'm finding out about him, and then he dies. Uh, sometime later and then the whole note thing comes out about you know he has a contact with the messiah in a dream and he knows the name and so by this time i'm just completely just consumed with who is this rabbi right has a contact with the messiah uh anyway um i found out about him this is well before the book was written about um uh, P.P. Simmons and um, uh, Carl Gallup's did the book with Zeb Porat. Um, so they got a new one out. Did do they? He's got yeah. a new one out. Yeah. So that's how I came in contact with him. And so I, I did a table on Rabbi Kaduri, and wow, he, he's absolutely, I mean, you know, I have to share that with you guys sometime. It's some powerful. Can I show you something real quick? Sure. There's no question to me that guy had an encounter with Yeshua. No. Question. Oh, there's no doubt. I, um, I hope I, I hope you got the I was I was saying that that, uh, that uh, I, for me I would like 
when I progress in the codes, I will take from the revelation of revelation of John and like the prophetic words of Yeshua mm -hmm. and such things to to like because they are pinpointing into a certain time in the future yeah. that will happen and that's reliable. That's exactly right. It's, that's the whole idea of, of using the, the text to pull your, your search terms because it's not subjective. You pull in yeah. terms that, that seems to be a searchable term and indeed if it's there it unlocks a table. Yeah, but, but I'm not suggesting, uh, you know, guessing like you just open a code program and try to find something and like all, all these guesses because I think there are layers in the in the tables that you can be pulling from a wrong layer i i personally think that but i hope you hope you heard me so somewhat yes roger that thank you oh i love it um what's really amazing is uh well you guys you guys uh you and chris know obviously about this anomaly and Psalms 91, 15, and 16, but when you look at the probability value, look at that. Less than one in a million. Wow. And look that at is, that statistic right and there. And that is just one, listen, one variable of this. The, the more information he extracts from this code, in other words, if he had it in a matrix, the more that number goes up, right? That is a beautiful little example right there of just finding a code embedded. It's always been there for thousands of years in a, in any chapters and verses. And then I did like a little, um, <clears throat> I did a little annotation of the actual note and how they found the Messiah's name in the note. And this isn't an ELS code. This is a different type of code. I forget what they call it. It's like uh, Rashi. Uh, uh, it's something that the yeshiva students do. They, it's you're looking at the first letter of every word. It's not necessarily um, uh, equidistant, but it's a different type of coding. It's so you're basically just looking for the first letter of every word to find your, your acronym. And, um, you, you know, Scott, there, there are many types of encryption that can be used or yeah. de 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 deciphering. It's just an example. And it's just, you know, it's it just, it's just, there's no doubt he met Yeshua because, you know, he's on the day of atonement, uh, <laughs> Uh, it's just a couple months before he died. He stands up in the seat of Moses in the synagogue and he starts reading from uh, uh, Isaiah 53. Or he starts reciting Isaiah 53 on the Day of Atonement. Amazing. Amazing. It's probably, I mean, his story is probably the most profound story that you'll hear in modern history. Um, in my and, opinion, amen to that brother and praise Yahua that he used, uh, brother Kaduri for that, right? A, a Kabbalist, a Kabbalah, yeah. a yeah. rabbi in Kabbalah, and, yeah. and they all thought he was nuts. And then, you know, and then you got guys uh, like Tobias Singer and all that trying to discredit it, <laughs> you know, and they they waited what they waited a year. He instructed his the caretakers of his website because when he died, he he was he, he was alive before Israel even became a country, and for him to have lived up until the advent of the internet, yeah. and then he was telling the caretakers of his internet site before he died, "Don't open this note until a year after I'm dead." Yeah, it's just so it profound. Just, you you know I I have to say Tovia Singer. At least I'm like, I don't want to say anything bad, but I'm aggravated because he's doing a great damage. Yes. He has, he has felt threatened by the Jews for Jesus movement. 
Um, that's usually who he, he targets and goes after those. And so uh, in Judaism, they came up with a countermeasure for this, um, um, this, you know, trying to get Jews to convert to, to Christianity, which is uh, an uphill battle in, in itself because the, 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 many of them will not accept Christianity in that model. Um, it just is not going to work. You have to approach it from Torah, uh, like, like Zev is doing. You cannot approach them with Jesus on the cross and crusaders and stuff because to Jews, this is bloodshed. The crusaders murdered a lot of Jews, and so they don't want that, right? Um, but, but I can understand because of that what, what they've gone through, like uh, wh why they don't accept this. We, we were talking about the Holocaust last meeting, weren't we? That, that the Nazis said, oh, we're just doing what the church fathers described. Actually, they, they, they thought they were following Christianity by killing Jews and many other people. Uh, it, was, it was six million Jews and six million, it was a total of 12 million that died. Mm -hmm. and there, was, yeah. there was a lot of Marxism and Darwinianism going back and during that time a lot of a lot of those disputes were were started over thinking that they were more superior than the others like the japanese thought they were more superior than the americans and the germans thought they were more superior than the jews and and so on and you know just for that example and that 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 whole mentality has survived up even till today and we're we're about to witness that with this pre adamic race stuff but but uh, the uh, Hitler and the SS, they met in a room and meditated on something creepy, and they were totally into devilish, demonic things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No question. Has anybody got, got anything they want to share before we close today? I want to thank everybody for... Uh, being a part of the class today it's good to see our new students and uh, even some that are joining us again like shelby it's good to see you all right let me pray uh uh pray us out and we'll see you in the next class guys all right you know Makeno, we just are so thankful for these students and what you're doing in their walk with you father in this program i just ask that you continue with them father and reveal yourself in a mighty way go with them this week um, and keep them protected if they're sick in their body. Father, we ask that you would deliver them uh, from the sickness and whatever is going on. And make them whole again. Bring them back to us in the appointed time. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Right. Well, Amen. Hey, Jonathan, you still get together with Zen? Yes, I am. Yep, on the 11th. Right on. Yep. Amen. Willow asked if someone could post the... Um, Kaduri video in Discord. Sure, will do. Yeah, we'll see you guys over there. I uh, I uh, put up the uh, Bible code that I just showed you with the correction for you to uh, publish, Brother John. So it's it's there in the water cooler. Okay, I'll take a look at it. Thank you, brother. We love you guys. Love you all. Praise you and shalom.